What's up, Cirque here for Full Stack Creative, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use OBS Studio to live stream with graphics and transitions and multiple cameras for free. It's no secret that live streaming is huge now. Facebook Live and YouTube Live are main features now of both of those platforms, but they aren't even five years old yet. So live streaming has grown exponentially among creators of all stripes. And whether you're a musician or a videographer or all of it, you probably are going to want to know how to live stream at some point. Now my favorite application to use for live streaming is OBS Studio for a number of different reasons. Number one, one, OBS Studio is completely free. And number two, OBS Studio gives you a larger feature set than any other freeware that could help you live stream. When you first download and open up OBS Studio, it can be a little bit intimidating. So I wanted to come to you with this quick tutorial to show you how to use OBS Studio out the box. So with that said, let's dive right here into this screen so that we can check out OBS Studio. Okay, so when you first open up the OBS software, this is what it should look like. Now, because I wanted to be able to capture this video using OBS, right now the middle screen is like an infinity loop of OBS screen, since I'm screen sharing from the same screen that has OBS on it. So I'm gonna replace this video with the video I'm recording, just so that you're not looking at an infinity loop the entire time. Now down here in the bottom left, we have a list of what are called scenes. Scenes are different prepared scenes. You might have a scene in here that is your screen share scene and it's got a display source of your actual screen on it. And you may have another scene that's for your head on videos, which has your webcam capture on it. Next to scenes, we have sources, which is where you would add those things I just talked about. You would add a given screen that you're viewing as a display source. You might add your webcam as a video capture device. Here, let me show you what I mean. First, First, let's click plus to create a brand new scene here in OBS. Let's call it test scene. Now, in order for you to see what I'm doing with this scene as I create it, I needed to add this display capture source here at the bottom. See this red box here? That is the display capture source. I can move it around, scale it, do pretty much whatever I want with it. So let's return that to full size real quick. And then let's click this plus button to see what other kinds of sources we can add to this scene. Here we have the audio input capture. That would be a given mic that is connected to your computer. It could be your webcam mic. It could be a mic connected to an audio interface that you have. Then we have audio output capture. This, if you select it, will basically include in the OBS live stream or the recording that you're making, any audio that's coming out of your computer. So if you're listening on headphones and playing a song, whatever you're hearing in your headphones will also be heard by anyone watching this video recording or this live stream. Then I have this black magic device option, which a lot of you won't have, but it's because I have a black magic shuttle to allow me to connect this camera you're seeing this on as a source here in OBS. We have browser source, which means you can basically select a browser window you have open and it will only show what is on that browser window. We have color source, which is basically like a color shape that you can add and I'll just click okay here. And then what you're seeing is the properties for this color source. And if we click this select color option, I can type in any color hex code I want. Like for instance, our brand colors and boom. Now I've got a rectangle on the scene that is our brand color and I can scale it up or down, move it around, do whatever I want with it. This is helpful for adding lower thirds titles or graphics. I could drag this all the way down and then I could add text here. Now, right under color source, we have display capture, which obviously is what I'm using to show you what I'm doing in OBS. Then we have game capture, which is really for your Twitchers out there, your, your gamers. A lot of gamers use OBS or OBS Studio to live stream their game play to Twitch or YouTube or wherever they're live streaming to. Next, we have image, which means you can literally select any image file you have stored on your computer and it will appear here in OBS. OBS. I'll go in here to Entrepreneur, go to our images, go to our logos, and then let's add in a PNG file of the Entrepreneur logo. Now we've got that image as a gigantic source in our scene. I'm just gonna downscale that significantly and boom. 
place that logo right there. You can also do this with just any image you want to include in your scene. Next under image, we have image slideshow. So you can have changing image files as time goes on in your live stream or your recording. Then we have media source, which is really for any kind of media. It could be a video file, could be an MP3. So if you want songs to play during your live stream, you can add them as a media source. If you want a video clip to play, you could add a media source in one scene and have that be your video break. Then you can switch between your screen share or your head on camera scene to that video break and it will instantly start playing whatever clip you select. Now down here, you can also choose any scene that you've prepared in OBS as a source in another scene, which is helpful if you're doing a head on camera, then you wanna switch to a screen share where well, you can have that whole head on camera scene in the bottom right of your screen share scene and you don't have to recreate all of those elements. You just add it, scale it down, throw it in the bottom right and you're good to go. Then we have text, which allows you to add text in any font to this scene and that's very helpful. Then we have VLC video source, which is if you have VLC media player, you can basically have that VLC window be a source in your OBS scene. Then of course, video capture device, which will allow you to select any webcam or camera that is connected to your computer. You can drag it around and scale it up or down just like we did with this display capture. Then we have window capture, which will allow you to select any given window that is open on your computer as a source. So if you have File Explorer open, you can use that as a source in your OBS scene. This is helpful if you plan to just share a specific window, you don't want them to see the rest of your computer. You can totally do that using this feature. Then we have a deprecated feature Feature called text free type two, which is pretty much the same as the text tool and I don't really use it. So now that we know what a scene looks like and we know all the different sources we can add to a scene, let's talk about some scenes you probably wanna prepare. Number one, we're probably gonna wanna prepare a head on scene like this. So you have at least some kind of mic source, whether that be from your camera or from a mic that's connected to your computer. And then you have some kind of video source like this camera or this webcam right here that I'm currently touching, but you can't see. And that's a head on scene that allows you to talk directly to your audience and share things with them. You might throw a title in the lower third over here just so that they know who they're watching. But other than that, that's a typical scene you're gonna wanna have. Then you probably wanna have a screen share scene, which allows you to show people what's on your screen. This can be limited to a display capture, like your whole screen, or it can be limited to a window capture, like a specific program that you're running on your computer right now. You wanna create all the scenes that you need before you go live or before you press record. Which brings me to my next point. OBS Studio is also a great software for recording videos. You're gonna be using a webcam, which I showed you how to get a pretty good looking image out of that in the last week's tutorial. And I'll throw a link right here. You're going to want some kind of software that captures everything coming from that webcam. And OBS is a great option. Pending that you're not recording, you're gonna wanna be able to stream. And I will show you how to do that. So you're gonna wanna come down here in the bottom right to your settings and then click on stream. If you're streaming to YouTube, this stream key is all you need to enter. And the stream key is going to be the stream name listed in YouTube. You would simply log into YouTube, go to your channel's YouTube studio, hover over other features and click live streaming. Then you go to events, schedule a new event, and then I'll just type in a name like tests, make it unlisted so that it doesn't actually go live to our audience and create the event. Then once that event is created for a future live stream, we're going to want to add a stream key for the main camera. So let's click single use stream key. And here we have the stream name. That is what we're going to want to put into OBS settings. Then click apply. Now, if you're doing Facebook live streaming, you would simply click this drop down where it says YouTube and go to Facebook live. Then you would enter the stream key into the stream key field. Once you click apply and okay, clicking this start streaming button will immediately start sending whatever's in your OBS window to that stream key. Then if you log into YouTube or to your Facebook Live and you click start streaming, it will start unleashing that video and audio onto your audience. During a stream, you can switch between scenes. You can add sources or subtract sources. You can make a lot of modifications to what people are seeing 
as it's going on, which is why I recommend setting up all of your scenes beforehand. Now, if you are streaming in this context and you click one of these other scenes, it will immediately switch to that scene using a fade out. We'll switch back to this test scene, which is great. You can transition between your prepared scenes as you're live streaming and no one will be the wiser. But if you'd like to see what you're doing before you actually make that transition, you can click this studio mode button. Then when you select a scene from your scenes list, for instance, it will show up on the left hand side here. Then when you click transition, it will fade this scene over here, allowing you to set up a new scene on the left hand side. This is a great option if you're going to be modifying your scenes during the live stream. But if you're going to be doing that, I highly recommend having someone to help you out just because it can be daunting presenting to an audience while trying to change up your sources or change some text in your scene. Lastly, I will say that there are a number of other helpful settings in the OBS Studio settings. You can change the actual pixel ratio of your video. So you can change it from 1080p to 4K or down to 720, depending on what your camera and your screen is like. You can also set a number of hotkeys, which is very helpful while you're live streaming. If you don't wanna be actually clicking and searching for scenes, you can just program some hotkeys to queue up certain scenes or make transitions, and then you don't really have to worry about fumbling for the right item in your scenes list. Lastly, if you have any trouble streaming to YouTube, it's probably going to involve going to these output settings. In the output settings, you can set different streaming variables for your different scenarios. So if you're streaming, recording, just recording audio, you can also set options for the replay buffer. To be honest with you, I really don't don't know what that means. I only know about the streaming settings because YouTube typically wants your keyframe interval to be two. I don't even know what a keyframe interval really is. I just know that YouTube gets fussy if it's not set to two. And that is how we use OBS Studio. Literally everything I just told you is everything I knew in order to do a year of successful live streaming. You don't need to be an OBS Studio maverick in order to accomplish a live stream. It's actually very simple. That said, I know a lot of our indies were struggling with the interface, so I wanted to come here during Thursday's toots to give you this teeny tiny toot about OBS Studio. Don't let the simplicity fool you because you can get very complex with this software depending on how complex you wanna make your scenes and your transitions. I mean, you can accomplish a full on legit badass live broadcasting setup with Open Broadcaster software. And it's free. What are you complaining about? It's free. So if you wanna start adding live streaming to your content repertoire, if you wanna strike up a live stream on a weekly basis, you now know everything you need to know in order to do that. And let me stress once again, for free. I've included a link below to download OBS Studio. This is not an affiliate link because once again, it's free. I highly recommend that you start adding in some live streaming to your technology and creativity stack. People love live and it's because of the edge of your seat nature of it. It's because they can say something to you and you can react in real time. It's like having access to any person in the world and that's why live streams on average get five times the engagement of a regular old video. So if you haven't been considering adding live stream to your stack, now's the time. And like any new technology that shows better results than others, it's going to fade as you wait. So take advantage now, strike while the iron is still hot and start live streaming to your audience. I promise you it will just kick up the relationship one notch, give you a little bit more of a back and forth with your audience. With that said, I've been Circa for Full Stack Creative. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified when we drop one of these tutorials every Thursday, in addition to our live video journal of running this crazy business that we operate and gear reviews every Tuesday. So if you wanna learn more about creating and monetizing amazing content, this is the place to do it. I hope to see you in in the next video. And I hope to see you out there in the live stream universe kicking a whole lot of ass.